Welcome to the Workforce Connections Podcast, where we discuss workforce development in Southern Nevada. Here's your host. Hi, welcome to another edition of the WC Podcast. My name is Celia Rouse, and I will be your host today. Today, I welcome two very special guests, Hannah Tester from Eagle Quest and Carlos Videz from the Department of Juvenile Justice Services. Welcome, Hannah and Carlos. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to ask you what you think of our new podcast studio. Hi, and thank you for letting us join today. The podcast room is great. I really like the the background. It's a very comfortable setup. Yeah, so they did a great job. It's it's a really nice place. Awesome. Well, we are so excited to have you here and have this conversation. So let's start off with um, what brought you guys to where you are today in your careers. Carlos, what made you um, decide to start a career with the juvenile justice services? Well, you know what? I've been working with kids actually since I was 18 years old. So you can say pretty much I was a kid when I started. So I've been at it for half of my life now or a little bit more than half of my life. Um, I switched over to criminal justice back at UNLV, had a great professor who ended up being my boss. Shout outs to Megan Jordan. Um, she taught me a lot. She, you know, presented me with the opportunity to work with family and kids. And after that, the opportunity to work with the Department of Juvenile Justice Services presented itself. And I've been here just about nine years now in a number of different facets between field probation and the detention division. And where are you at now? Oh, currently I'm stationed at a South Academic as part of the school engagement team. Um, I'm kind of like the liaison between um, the D Department of Juvenile Justice Services and the school district. You know, I have the role of probation officer one day, counselor the next, a little bit of everything pretty much of what's needed. I try to help the youth and their families, um, you know, with whatever may be needed between their probation terms to finding them resources, to helping with jobs, to clothing, to nutrition. So whatever's needed, I'm kind of a jack of all trades there. That's awesome. Or I try to be. Yeah. And Hannah, how about you? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been in the mental health slash social work field for about six years now. I also... Like Vita, as I started when I was 18 in a mental health hospital, actually. Um, and then I grew to case management with adults. And then I moved out here about three years ago. And I found this great foster care job. And then I started working with kids as a case manager. So when I first started the Promise Fellows, I was a lead case manager. But now I've been promoted to supervisor. Um, but as a case manager, we do really everything. We um, check in on our parents and we check in with our kids. And we, of course, there's paperwork that goes along with that, but we're really um, an advocate for our parents and for our kids. That's amazing. It's amazing that you have that compassion for the foster youth. Uh, you mentioned the Promise Fellows. You guys just completed the first, you were the inaugural cohort. Um, can you tell us about your experience with with the Promise Fellows and what it what's, it has brought to your, your current role? Yeah, absolutely. It was a great experience. I think when you put um, eight great minds in a room and you're, you're sitting down and you're trying to come up with programs to really benefit our kids, only good things can happen from it. Um, the experience as a whole, like I said, it was just, it was, it was a really good experience being able to bounce ideas and experiences off of each other and also being able to um, really work with the resources that are available and have more knowledge of the resources that are available. Um, I think when it comes to my current role, even though um, working in foster care was different than just working with kids who were on probation, um, I was able to take a lot of the resources back to our case managers to help benefit our kids too. And Carlos? Um, a little bit of ditto. I think um, it was a great experience in the, you know, bouncing ideas with each other. And even though we work in very related fields, it was it was great to see the other side of it. Seeing uh, Hannah, for example, working with foster care youth or some of the other young ladies that worked as part of the harbor and their day-to-day, -day, you know, and they, they got to see what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, when I originally was presented to myself, I, I, I thought I knew a, a little bit about workforce development, having worked, you know, part of workforce before I started at probation. But I mean, mind blown, you kind of get to see all the different programs and you see what they offer, how they're different, how they're similar and what they individually offer each, you know, family and each youth. Um, so it was a great uh, eye opening experience just to be able to see exactly how all the things work and um, how the scene behind the scenes work. Um, 
for me, it's, I mean, it's easy to work, to bring it back to my jobs, right? I work with a bunch of teenagers and my big, biggest thing is from 14 to 18 year olds. So for me, it's like, hey, seeing a kid who needs a job, who needs resources, well, now I have them and I have them at my hand because I know exactly which resources are available and what they offer and which one's best suited for them. So it, it's, it, it was a great experience and the fact that now I have so many more tools on my belt to be able to help not just the kids, but also their families. Well, that's great. I'm glad you guys were a part of it. You had a big impact on the capstone project that you presented and, you know, hopefully getting it implemented in all of the harbors and providing, you know, workforce development at a younger level than what we can do currently. Um, regarding the system impacted youth that you both work with, um, programs like the harbors have helped um, make it easier for those needing meaningful services with the, for the youth and their families. Um, like Carlos, can you explain what like some of the most pressing challenges are and for those individuals and what they're still experiencing? Um, well, I mean, as we all know, um, families uh, are in need of a lot of different services. Uh, nowadays, mental health is such a big thing. Um, and I, I don't think it's that it's more important now than it was before. I just think it's one of the more, more pressing needs as well. Uh, with that said, nutrition, um, housing, and I think these have been brought more to the forefront now that the pandemic is starting to leave us behind, it just, the pandemic's gone, but these issues are still there. And I get to see a big part of it being at a school and seeing the kids on a daily basis. So being a pre being able to know the resources that are available, being able to have worked with and seeing how people that work in these um, divisions and what they do, um, it allows me to be able to um, help these kids a little bit more and, and finding the resources that are actually needed. Cause it's easy to say like, Hey, well, this kid needs a resource to send it to them and give them a phone number and keep pushing them on. But when you actually know a person and you can give the warm handoff or you can give the bus pass to the kid and make sure that the kid gets there, make sure that the kid gets to meet the person that's actually going to be helping them going forward. It builds that bridge. And I think that's what maybe had been missing just a little bit in the past. I think we're starting to build that bridge so that kids aren't just, you know, given to someone else, but are actually, you know, walked through to be, you know, to be able to help them. Right. And that yeah. was the design of the Promise Fellows Correct. to kind of bridge all of the different agencies to give a warm handoff. Have you experienced that with the, with the foster youth? Yeah, absolutely. And I was thinking of other challenges too, that, you know, our kiddos still and families still experience as well. I know that's something that we talked about in our capstone quite a lot and something that I didn't even realize until um, you know, I was in a room with probation and the harbors was that getting and um, obtaining documentation is still such a big issue. I know with working on the DFS side that I have a little more connections than those who are strictly, you know, just probation kids. And I didn't realize the challenge that they face when it comes to, you know, obtaining their documentation. But I also think another challenge that, like you had stated earlier, that we're looking at is trying to provide or get services for kids who are younger, too. Because the other part of our capstone was starting at a young age. That's the biggest thing and most important thing is being able to um, intervene while they're young so we don't reach the point where they're 16 and need to be on probation. You guys did a beautiful job of getting those resources and the exposure to workforce development in your capstone presentation um, made me very proud since I did, you know, kind of guide you guys <laughs> with what I knew. <laughs> um, what is the hope for the future cohorts of the Promise Fellows, Anna? Like, what do you, what do you hope that they gain, or what do you hope they add to what you have already created? I think the biggest hope is implementation. So ensuring that we are implementing or finding a way how we can get these programs to actually start, which I know that we kind of built the the frame line for them. So actually being able to, let's put it into action because the action is the most important part as well as the, the planning part of it. So, and I'm hoping that they'll also find the importance of being able to put their heads together as well and be able to really utilize the resources. Cause I think it would have been a waste for someone to come in, find the resources and then not deliver them to either their team members or their kids or whoever they're working with. So being able to come in, face the challenge, let's implement some programs and let's build on top of it too. I'd love to see what their minds think of as well. 
How about you, Carlos? I think the best way, what she said at the very end, like building upon some of the things that we put. So definitely the implementation part is going to be nice to see and seeing how it builds from the ground up. Um, also, maybe touch on some of the things that we weren't able to get. As we know, there's so much out there. And we came up, I think, with some really great ideas. And we were only able to just dabble our feet in, you know, this expanse. You know, it's so big. Um, so maybe touch on, you know, undocumented uh, teens and their families, foster care youth and detain youth. What other resources are available to them? Not just when they get out, but possibly when they're out and, you know, how to grab them quickly. Because we know that, you know, when a youth foster kid is on his own or a detained kid is on his own, you have such a very little very little time frame to actually grab them before the streets grab them back you know so maybe touching on them and seeing what other resources are available um how we can better reach them maybe and provide the resources that are available i'm excited to see what they bring and the new ideas you know the innovative ways that's the great thing about this you know cohort it's like the innovative ways right it's like stop thinking the way everybody else thinks like bring up new ideas like this is the things that everybody talks about Okay, cool. Think outside the box. See what else we can bring out there. Well, I'm excited to see how we grow this. And I would thank you so much for being part of the first cohort and your brilliance that you guys added to developing this initiative. Um, is there anything else that either one of you would like to share with our listeners? Anything? I mean, I'd like to give a shout out and a special thanks to my supervisor, Lupo, and um, Director Jack Martin and all of his administrative team for giving us the opportunity to go. Like, these are really cool things to do. You know, these are that new step, you know, that new way of thinking. And um, we just have to remember, like, it's a workforce connections. It's about the kids. It's about helping them find employment. And I've, I've said it from the very beginning. If you can get a kid a job, if you can f help them make an honest buck, there's a really good chance that kid's not coming, not going to come back into the system. So if there's new ways to teach them, is there, if there's new ways to to get them interested, then I'm all for it. And I'll agree. I definitely ditto thanking um, everyone, of course. And I also would like to thank, you know, everyone at Eagle Quest and our teams in the harbors and everything as well. And even the teams here at Workforce, this has been a great experience to be a part of. Um, but I also just want to remind everyone that, you know, the point of us being here is for the kids and their families. It's to build on our community. So just remembering to don't no no thought is necessarily a bad thought. Let's bring it all to the table and let's work on, you know, rebuilding our community for these kids and for these families. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today. And that is it, folks. That is all we have for you today. Uh, thank you for joining us on this segment of the WC podcast and we will see you again soon. Thank you, Carlos and Hannah, for staying over for our bonus segment called Against the Wall. The first segment is your favorites. Your favorite food, Hannah? Chicken pot pie. Tacos. Your favorite movie? Horror films. Uh, thriller films. Your favorite book? Anything by Colleen Hoover. Uh, the Da Vinci Code. Your favorite subject in school? Math. English. Your favorite holiday? A lot of good one. Oh, Thanksgiving for Christmas. Okay, second choice. Second second segment. Tough choices. Vacation or staycation, Hannah? Vacation. Vacation all day. More money or more time? More time. More time. Live in a big city or live in a small town? Small town. Big city. Owe money or owe a favor? Owe a favor. Owe a favor. Cook the meal or clean the kitchen? Cook the meal. Clean the kitchen. Justice or grace? Grace. Grace. Actions or words? Actions. Actions. Third segment, finish the sentence. If you could live anywhere, it would be? Tennessee. Mexico. Your favorite thing about your job is? Working with the kids. Working with the families. The best part of Southern Nevada is? The community. The mountains. If you could travel back in time, where would you travel to? The 1990s. The 40s. The one thing you will never regret is? 
Moving to Vegas. Getting married and having my son. Three words that describe you are? Kind, forgiving, and compassionate. Enthusiastic, fun, and spur of the, spur of the moment. Doing the WC podcast today was? It was great. A lot of fun. That's a wrap. 